but a different lineup on the way for Team Empire this year. And they've also had a reasonably good year, but so far have flattered to deceive. They did go out, of course, in the Group B stages and fell to the bottom half of the bracket thanks to a playoff. And, uh, of course, got into the top half and then lost yesterday. So they've made it the hard way round. We'll see whether they can continue through the international today because they are in the last chance alone. Of course, these teams now playing in best of threes and the loser disappears from the competition. So they are in the last time that they can have anything to do with the international. When they go further, they've got to win today. Their opponents today are MVP Phoenix and they line up like this. MVP Phoenix, of course, coming through that uh, incredible game against Newby yesterday, knocking out the reigning champions and continuing on. They will finish at the very least 9th to 12th, an improvement on their previous placements, of course, for March, who is uh, 28 in his last international as he heads off to uh, <laughs> military service at the end of this international. And he'll want to go as far as he can. He already said that in the interview, in a very emotional interview with Casey yesterday. So we'll start with MVP Phoenix and start with Molini. The odds are against them, obviously. Uh, they've fallen to a team, Team Empire, who we know how strong they are. And yesterday, it could be argued that they probably won one and a half games yesterday uh, against LGD. And obviously, you've got to win 2-1 at that. But they played well for some moments and then went down to the lower bracket. Are they not the stronger team of the two? Empire? Yeah. Yes, certainly on paper. And even going before the tournament, I think uh, Cinderin had them in their top three. I would probably have Empire my top eight. And MVP Phoenix, I didn't even have coming out through the wild cards. But MVP Phoenix, I mean, they've been playing very, very well. But I think more so, it just depends on how Empire is going to show up. Yesterday, they played amazingly. By far the best I've seen them in any of the games they played, including the group stage. Uh, and if they play like they did versus LGD, I think it should be actually an easy 2-0 for them. Okay. Um, Ted, it's not always easy to compare team side by side unless they've played recently, of course. And the, and the most recent form we have about MVP Phoenix, and it's interesting, is that they came out of the wild cards where C-Deck came out, and they're in the semi-finals of the upper bracket. Does that not put them in a bit of context, actually? They weren't quite as bad as everyone thought they were. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I think in a competition like this, you win one best of three, and all of a sudden, you know, things improve for you drastically. You lose one, and all of a sudden, things get terrible. So I think it's hard to gauge them on a small sample size like that. But the question I would have is that everyone's been telling me MVP teams play a very aggressive style, and that the reaction from Empire is going to be, do they go and fight, or do they go and farm? And that's what I'm going to be looking to see, because I think if they feel they're the better team, they'll go and fight, and they'll think they can outfight them, maybe. Okay. All right. Wagon, what are your thoughts on this one? I actually think that, as Merlini said, like Empire is, on paper, a stronger team, but I always count on uh, March to surprise and impress. Mm. He wasn't particularly spectacular stats-wise yesterday. I think he said himself he only went one and none, and that was horrible, in his own words. Uh, but QO was very strong yeah. yesterday. No, if MVP Phoenix are going to win this series, they're going to do it on the back of QO. QO is 8.8 .8 kills per 35 minutes in Dota 2 LAN games. That is by far far the most of any player the next highest is 7.6 he's 14.5k hero damage per 35 minutes next highest is under 13k this kid is explosive and if they have a hope of beating empire it is going to be behind his play okay thank you very much gentlemen we are headed into the draft for the lower bracket knockout game for mvp phoenix and Virtus pro <laughs> team empire versus MVP Phoenix. Team Empire, of course. My bad. Okay. Silence. A complete silence. <laughs> that, was, that was the death of my say, career I, right there. Uh, Alan, yeah. You make stats so exciting, dude. It's he does, amazing. doesn't he? I was on the edge of my seat. I was like, wow, numbers. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so here we go. MVP Phoenix versus Team Empire. Team Empire coming to this as the favourites to win, but we've already seen today that favourites, it doesn't really matter at the international. Yeah. There are no favourites anymore. I mean, take, e home taking down Secret 2-0, you'd have to probably give me like 1 at 20 odds on that, I would say. Like really? One, one I 10. think you'd have to give way <laughs> higher odds than that. 
Uh, I mean, it's it's crazy that Ehome actually upset that. I'm, I'm still like a little, wow. It's just amazing how that happened. TI is always so unpredictable and crazy. Let, let me be very clear. If you gave me 1 to 20 odds on any team in this tournament beating another, you, you, I would bet any amount you want to name. 2-0. Like, these are really, 2-0 is tough, but these are really, really good teams. Uh, I, I, I think Ehome was definitely a huge, huge underdog, but, I mean, they outplayed him in that second game so thoroughly. Yeah, outplay and just, you know, they looked like a team. Ehome definitely came together. Everything they did was, you know, well executed. The pickoffs, CTY did not just shine as an individual, but he also worked really well together with his teammates. And, and you know what that makes me think about? I want to go back to something that Pyrian brought up, and that's that, you know, Team Empire so far in this tournament have really only had one mode. They've gone at you, and they've gone at you hard. And, of course, that's kind of the CIS Dota stereotype. And that's a big question that I have going into this as well. MVP Phoenix play very well as five. They're going to take the fight to you early. Are Empire going to be able to sort of diversify their play a little bit? I think at some point in this series, they're going to need to play more than one style. Yeah, I think they will need to play more than one style, but they're also going to be happy to meet any type of aggression because LGD came out swinging as well in the second game against Empire. And Empire, like, there was a massive bloodbath going on on the bottom lane. If MVP go into the similar type of approach, you're going to have to have extremely good coordination and individual talent to outplay Empire in their, you know, home turf, which is chaos. How much of that decision do you think is going to depend on how the first game goes? Like, let's say for the first game, they decide to fight and they lose. Do they then say, well, we've got to try something else because we don't want to do that again? I mean, it's hard to play a fighting game and not win and then come back and do the same thing again and think, well, maybe it'll work this time. I think a lot of teams are kind of scared of trying the same thing too many times in a row and it failing. There must be a tendency at some point to say, all right, we'll try plan B. I mean, sometimes it's just tweaking a little bit. For example, we saw Secret go with an anti-mage, which is pure late game, but you can always mix it up with like a Magnus anti-mage, which right. is, you know, heavy team fight and heavy late game. And, you know, it's always just a balance of things in Dota. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case. Like, first game, more importantly than draft, I think, it sets the tempo of your mentality. It's not really about, I don't want to play the same style. It's more that, oh, now we have the pressure to win two games in a row. Being able to take it step by step is an important skill as well there. So uh, I think that's the bigger thing, just getting the momentum over your opponent. Yeah, I, I really think Empire are a better team when Resolution is on a hero with serious late game potential. Uh, they run a very, very strong Tiny Wisp. I mean, Silent is just is such a steady performer. I, to me, one of the more surprising things that we've seen is Silent made a couple major misplays yesterday in game one against LGD. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, come on. Guy. How Nuts can you is, argue with that? Look Nuts is looking guy. so confident and happy today. Even when they walked out on stage, he's just, he's just here to play. I think there's the happiness of being into the best of three, actually, just not dying in the first <laughs> round. Oh, yeah. And, of course, knocking out Newbie was a great performance already. And, I mean, I, 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 I will admit it. I, I actually had to go and, and give these guys a hug in the suite afterward because you know, I got to know them a little bit in Columbus, and this is just a great team with a great attitude. Yeah, that can be said about both the Korean teams. They're really amazing players and personalities. I don't think my tweet to the Korean government worked. I think no. March is still going to have to go and join the military. But maybe you gotta try. if they win this best of three, we'll try again. Yeah. The campaign lives on. And let's do it. and Set get, March free. And get behind it this time because yeah. there wasn't nearly enough retweets. Well, we need thousands. Yeah. Basically. Millions. Millions. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> So in terms of bans for Queen this game, you're pain. looking to ban the heavy fighters. I think like <laughs> if your first pick, you don't want to ban Bounty Hunter, but Empire did it anyways. Although I, I would have thought that would have been a really good first pick. Queen of Pain, Undying, and obviously Leshrac. Yeah. Uh, Gyro, maybe you can slip through a little bit, but um, BH would be just a pleasure to get. Yeah, it would have been a nice to have the advantage of having Bounty Hunter to keep track of the enemy and just, you know, get more out of the team fights. But Queen of Pain is so solid. Yeah. I think it's more about having strong laners as well and than just having strong team fights. Because well, flexibility. Yeah, uh, exactly. I having mean, strong it, lanes, you go into the fights very easily. Yeah, I mean, we just saw, right, this was our big point of contention in that last uh, secret draft, was picking the SF and the AM so early. It really locks your lanes in the chat. The Queen of Pain, Empire runs her in all three positions, and boy, oh boy, <laughs> this is a combo. I feel like a lot of people have just forgotten about the Bristleback Wisp. This is a tremendously scary combo. And it's a favorite of MVP. They have played this so many times before, so... 
going back and saying, hey, Bristleback and IO first pick, let's do it. It's pretty hard to counter. There are some hero stuff very good against Bristleback, and we have seen like Witch Doctor who's good against the Wisp and so on, but it is always scary going up against these two together. I think you need a support that deals with it, like Disruptor or Winter Wyvern yes. or Naga Siren. I would probably say Shadow Demon too. Shadow, also. Shadow Demon is decent, but you don't need a pick in the first place. Okay. Any pick, any I time the, I see the worst. The, the Bristol Io, I've seen that picked a lot, especially if they think it's going to be a weak safe lane. Like if they're running a jungler or something, it's absolutely disgusting. There's no real way to stop it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they're just throwing it out there. Like, try and stop this. I mean, how bad is the Wyvern for that combo? Do you think that's going to just destroy it or not? It's bad when he gets levels. Like, Winter Wyvern can definitely do a lot when he has level 6. But really early on, it's tough to contest this. And the laning power of Wisp and Bristleback is definitely terrifying. They can go off lane or mid, like, they can do different lanes with it, too. But they have the right heroes to just blow up to Wisp right now. Yeah. Like, they do. The Pain and Winter are perfect. Yeah. Overall, Winter Wyvern 24 and 11 head to head against IO in 6.84. Wow. It's just, it's really, it's one of the hard counters in the game right now. I hate Winter Wyvern. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> Not my jam. I'm glad, Ted, you're with me there. That's that's amazing. I think most core players hate Winter Wyvern as well. It's uh, it's a frustrating hero. I would like to see Timbersaw picked up a little bit more versus this. We saw Timbersaw picked up, but it wasn't the best game for it. Uh, I think Vici also picked it up once, but that was versus a Huskar. I think versus uh, IO Bristleback, it can just decimate these two. Definitely. It's a strong counter to that. Removing all the strength. And even Wisp being that annoying support, he is still strength hero. Some people forget that, thinking he's anything else. So uh, Timbershaw does deal tremendous damage with the Q against them. Other solutions that we've seen is like Axe to get him to face towards your team. LC uh, by the same token. On top of that, uh, yeah, just deal. If you deal with a Wisp, it becomes significantly easier. Right. Was that the complexity game where they had the Timbershaw? I felt that was yeah. that was the only reason they were in that game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just kept them in it. I was like, okay, if it wasn't for this Timber, this game would have been over 25 minutes ago. So, yeah. But Empire usually plays, like, initiator heroes on their offlane. Like, right. Tusk, I think, has, has been overlooked in this. But he's, you know, they usually have Earthshaker, Axe, right. thinking. Really surprised to me to see Tusk make it into the second phase against Empire. This is the this was really the team that brought brought Tusk back into the meta. Now it's usually Aloha Dance that'll be on that hero, but yeah, I mean Yoki can play anything. Yeah, Yoki can play anything, but as you said, it for them it actually suits a lot to have it on the support. Yoki, he likes having uh, the AOE initiators a little bit more than a crazy initiator Lion. like Tusk who just rolls in. So. Since none of them, or I guess Shaker is banned, but all the others are still available. Magnus is there, Axe is there, uh, Shake, uh, Shaker being removed. But, yeah, exactly. Sanking is there. There are plenty of options for him. Yeah, we saw them run Magnus a couple of times in that series against LGD, and I think all of us on the panel were a little bit critical of he held on to his RPs yeah. a little bit too much in those games. Uh, I really, a player like of his caliber, I think is going to fix those mistakes if he gets another chance. For sure, for sure. I watched those games as well, and it was really close, so it was tough. Always the difficult choice to go for the solo RP or try for the bigger, you know. Is patience really a virtue when you play Magnus? So we talked poorly about Lion, I think, in a lot of the scenarios uh, in the prior games, but Lion, I think, is a pretty good hero here. Good magic burst against Winter Wyvern, good control versus Queen of Pain, and more importantly, good uh, setup if you want to relocate on a hero with the Hex. Very reliable. Yeah, it's it's a nice nice hero to get. I, I'm i starting to get worried for MVP in the same way. I think back to the C9 games where they got their Wisp. It felt like Templar they got assassin. faded into the Wisp pick because they're so good counters now. Queen with the damage, Winter Wyvern who 